Why are you running to be the leader of the Conservative Party? I'm running to be leader of the Conservative Party because I think that we have a once in a generation opportunity to renew our party from top to bottom. We've been in government for 14 years and the world has changed and we need to change with it. So we need a party that has a new focus for a new era and we need to work out who we are and what we stand for as well. And I think I'm the person to do that. It isn't just about winning, it's about what we're going to win for. It is about having uh, the values and principles that we can all unite behind, not just uniting for its own sake. And that's what I'm about. And that's why I'm making my pitch to the Conservative Party. What do you think we need to do over the coming years to win the next general election? And how will you achieve it? We need to tell the truth. We need to be honest. Uh, we need to be honest about why we lost. In my view, that was because we were talking right and governing left. So what people were hearing wasn't what they were seeing. And we need to change uh, that for 2029. We need to make sure that people understand what our offer is. We need to make sure that we can renew conservatism for the future. We need to make sure that our party, uh, whether it is volunteers, activists, local government councillors, all of the people who make the Conservative Party what it is all across our country are part of that discussion. We need to uh, cohere again. Our policy offer previously was incoherent. And if we know who we are and what we are, we are about, then we'll be able to move forward with the right policies that will help us win the 2029 election. Do you have a longer term vision for the party beyond 2029? Yes, I do. That is why my campaign isn't called Kemi for Leader. It's called Renewal 2030, which would be the f very first full year that we uh, could possibly be in government. And it is thinking about what the next decade is going to be like. The 2020s have turned out very differently from what uh, we were thinking. We need an offer for the people who are 18 now, who are going to be uh, working adults in the future. We need to think about what the children of today uh, are going to have tomorrow. I believe that we need to create an inheritance for the next generation in the same way that those who came before us gave us a fantastic inheritance. We can't just live off our inheritance, we need to grow it. And that means doing that across the board on everything that people care about, whether it's family, education, health. We need to make sure that we are creating a country that's fit for the future, not just today. What are the top three policy areas you'll prioritize? And what specific actions will you take in those areas? Uh, so my campaign is very much focused on principles first, uh, not policy. We are not in government, so we need to look at what we can change and how we communicate. I think that we, uh, we can focus on three principal areas where we have gone wrong, explaining uh, where, for instance, we've gone wrong with immigration, that the duty of a government is to its citizens. So the concept of a nation state and sovereignty is very important to me and then we can build policy on top of that. The same with public services. It's better that the government does uh, some things very well rather than trying to do everything badly. That is how we end up with a state that is too big, too bureaucratic and toppling over and one that is becoming more and more expensive while not delivering enough for people. So those are two areas uh, where there are key principles that I think that we need to, that we need to focus on. But the third is about uh, wealth creation and productivity. This is something which is a problem across the Western world. Uh, we need to rediscover entrepreneurialism with benefits of free markets, why we need to create capitalists uh, so that capitalism is something that survives in our country. And that means ensuring that young people have a home, for example. There is so much that we can do, but we've got to start from first principles. How would you describe your leadership style and how will you ensure unity and inclusiveness within the party? So my leadership style, uh, many people will know, is straight talking and honesty. I think it is very important that we say what we mean and do what we say. So my leadership style is one that will be very direct, uh, no nonsense, but actually embedded in a team. So all of the things that I've achieved in my life, in my career, have been with the help of other people. No one can do it alone. I don't believe in presidential style politics. And I think building a very strong team, a team of people who uh, think differently, have different experiences, but who are conservatives is one that will help us uh, deliver a government in the future. It's not about just having your friends. It's not about uh, doing everything by yourself. But most importantly, my leadership style will be one of respect. Everybody who uh, has become an MP and all the people who work in our party deserve a lot of respect. 
I think that they felt disrespected uh, by some of the behaviours by a few people. It was a small number of people in Parliament. And there's a lot that we need to do to earn back their trust and win their respect. And I think we can do that uh, with honesty. And that is something that has been central to everything that I've done in my life. How did you first get involved in politics and the Conservative Party? Uh, so I wasn't involved in politics at university. Uh, it, wasn't, um, it wasn't something that, that, that ever really crossed my path. I first got involved in 2005. So I was working and doing um, a part-time degree as well. And I just found that uh, it was something that kept calling to me. I remember once watching t uh, TV and seeing an, a, a Labour MP uh, giving a speech. And I was absolutely... Uh, just shocked at how terrible the speech was. And I thought I could do a lot better than that. Um, and I wasn't actually thinking about becoming an MP. But by that time, I realized that I was very much a conservative and had been all my life, probably even as a child. I wouldn't have called myself a conservative, but joining the party was something that I did locally because I wanted to help the people who were uh, standing for council. I wanted us to have a conservative council and I wanted to meet people and make friends. I wanted to meet like-minded people. I already had quite a lot of left-wing people in my life. I thought it was time that we, I, I, I met some people who shared my own political beliefs and all of those things together uh, and, uh, you know, ensured that I ended up joining the party rather than just watching from behind the scenes. What did you do before politics and how has it shaped your views? Uh, I am an engineer by training. So I studied engineering at university and I worked as a systems analyst uh, in many industries from tech to banking. And it was something that I love and still do love. I do miss uh, bits of, of that old life because it was about fixing things. So I love fixing things. I can't see something and leave it alone. I want, uh, I want to make it better. It, you know, that's what keeps me awake at night, knowing that something is broken, whether it is a leaky tap or the public sector productivity. These are the things that make me, uh, you know, th th that move me and that I'm passionate about. It's about fixing things, making them perfect, making them work. And uh, in all of my politics, I think I've always been an engineer, being very logical, very analytical, very direct, because in engineering, there's no room for uh, misunderstanding or miscommunication. Using a word wrongly, using a number wrongly, means that bridges fall down and things blow up. So that's why I'm very specific with the words that I use and, um, and how I speak to make sure that everybody understands what it is that I mean. But it, uh, I may be a politician now, but at heart, I'm always an engineer. What would you say is the highlight of your political career? That's such a difficult question because there have been many moments uh, that I have been proud of. Becoming an MP, for example, lots of people said it would never happen and I couldn't do it and here I am. But in terms of uh, things that I have done with the politics, uh, I tend to be known for being an equalities minister and less for the work that I did on trade. My highlight on the trade brief was signing uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, CPTPP. And that's because it brought lo lots of elements together. It wasn't something that was necessarily going to happen. Trade deals are really difficult. Uh, 13 different countries uh, is also particularly complex rather than just doing a bilateral agreement. People didn't want to do the deal. Uh, some people were trying to get more from the UK than uh, needed uh, to be given. And I held the line. Uh, it took a little bit longer than uh, it probably would have done. But we got that deal and it's going to deliver for generations of people in the UK for many years to come. Uh, it's going to strengthen our links with the Asia Pacific. It helps us be that global Britain on the world stage, shows that the UK is a country that lots of people want to do business with. And I don't think that would have happened if it hadn't uh, been the work that I did along with my team as well. So I'm very proud of that. How has the Conservative Party shaped you as a person? The Conservative Party? has had a significant impact on my life. I met my husband in the Conservative Party. He was deputy chairman of my association when I was first a candidate uh, nearly 15 years ago. And without the Conservative Party, I wouldn't have my husband, I wouldn't have my children. So it's literally my family uh, and figuratively as well. And I think that that is how we need to look at each other. We're a volunteer organization, but we're also a family and that's how we should treat each other. Who is your biggest inspiration? My biggest inspiration, uh, probably the women in my family. So my mother is a huge, has been a huge inspiration to me. Uh, my grandmother as well. 
They were uh, women who grew up in a totally different uh, sort of set of circumstances in poverty and through hard work, uh, entrepreneurship, and just the sort of hardcore conservative values that we uh, th th that we promote, family, personal responsibility. They were able to do so much. And they have had a much bigger impact on me than any politician ever has. But it's also one of the reasons why I think it is important that um, we champion the family and that people uh, get uh, to grow up in strong families. The family you grow up in is likely to have the biggest impact on your life. And uh, I know what my family did for me. And I want everyone uh, in the country, every child uh, who grows up to have what I had. What do you hope members will learn about you during this campaign? that they may not already know. How serious I am about the project of renewal. I think that's something that I really want members to, to know. I think that the Conservative Party is one of the greatest institutions of this country. And those of us who are in it now are custodians of something that's really precious. And we need to look after it. It's feeling a bit battered now. It's very bruising after a general election but we can't just carry on as we are. And I want uh, our party members to know how serious I am about making sure that we can turn our institution around and make sure that it is fit for the future. And that is why I think that I'm one of the uh, best people who can carry out uh, this difficult task, because it's going to require a lot of honesty and a lot of uh, you know, self-analysis, which isn't an easy thing to do. A lot of people think that I'm very blunt or abrasive. What I am is honest and straight talking. And if we're going to do this quickly, then we're going to have to cut through a lot of stuff that will be difficult, but we can do it. We are the Conservative Party. We've been around for hundreds of years. And um, my task now is to make sure that we continue to be around for the next couple of hundred years. <laughs> What do you hope to show the public during this leadership campaign? Um, I hope to show the public that uh, we have learned a lot of lessons. Uh, we lost their trust in a big way, and we need to show that we understand why we lost their trust. The election uh, this year was very much a rejection of what our offer was and some of the things that we had done during our time in government. I want the public to know that we have learned those lessons that we can do better and that they should put their faith in us. I don't think that the Labour Party is going to fix any of the things which it says it will do. We need to show the public that we are ready, that they can trust us, that we are capable and competent, and that we understand them, that we share their values, that we think of them before we think of ourselves. Too often, uh, many people saw a parliament that looked like it was sorting itself out rather than sorting the problems of the public out, and that needs to change. I think that that's something that I can do, and I hope that we will get the chance uh, to be able to share our new messages with the public and that they will uh, listen and agree with us. Any other thoughts you'd like to share? Yes, uh, I think I want to emphasise just how much uh, in listening mode I am at the moment. My father was a doctor, and he used to say that if you got the diagnosis wrong, you could give all sorts of treatments, but the patient wouldn't get better, and you've got to start with getting a correct diagnosis. And a correct diagnosis of what has gone wrong is going to require input from everyone across the party, not just my own thoughts and ideas. Yes, I do have uh, my own feelings about why we lost, but that's not going to be the full answer. So I'm very much in listening mode and wanting to hear from all of the members uh, in our party and even the public about how we can use this uh, project, this Renewal 2030, uh, to reshape our party, renew it, and in time the country as well.